Hey, Chicago, Helen Logan. I always wonder why do you, yes, I have on earrings. I felt like earrings today. It's those little things um, that I think just kind of make us feel better. I, I'm a little suffering from allergies right now, by the way, if you hear it in my voice. I just took my first Claritin of the season. New York strong, yes, sir. So yes, I put on the earrings to feel a little better. I attempted um, eyeliner, but as you can see, wait, this one left the building early. I don't know what just happened because I do need to deal. What's up? So, hey, Connecticut, how are you? So we've got a great show for you today. A lot to discuss, a lot to get to. My team um, did another outstanding job producing the show from home and bringing us phenomenal list of people to talk with. So last night here at our house, nothing exciting really. I did um, get takeout for the first time. I'd been on the fence about takeout. I read a number of articles about food safety and there's no indication that coronavirus um, can be spread through food. How you handle the packaging, obviously there have been articles on it. In fact, my husband pulled up one uh, but overall food safety and I really wanted to support the local restaurants that are doing takeout because that is still contributing to somebody keeping a job. So yesterday I got takeout Mexican. I got a burrito with uh, beef and then I got chicken quesadilla. So I too, like many of you, have been on um, a break from my diet or my healthy eating. So I did that last night, got my uh, quesadilla in, got my burrito in, and I was very happy about it. And I was also very happy to support a local small business. I cannot lie, I was a little nervous getting takeout for the first time. I've been cooking all of our meals um, since we've been self-quarantined, uh, self-isolated. But last night we got takeout and followed all the rules as far as retrieving, the, you know, leaving it at the door. So I advise you to do the same if you feel comfortable to support some of the restaurants in the area. So let's hop to it. Our first guest today, and yes, Moses will be dropping by. And uh, he too is having hair struggles. Oh, hair struggles. So yes, I, I shampooed my hair for the first time um, because like everybody else, I'm not going to the hair salon. Come on, or the hair salon's not coming to me either. So I shampooed my hair. Today, Johnny Wright, my hairstylist will join us at the end of the show. He's going to give you some tips on hair maintenance and hair management when you can't get to the salon. I am going gray in some places that I won't get so close so you can see. Um, and I saw this meme that said, we are all about three days away from knowing each other's real hair color. So talk about, do you color your hair yourself at home? If that's a good idea. And what are some things that we can do in our house? Gumbo, Roland Martin, oh please. Roland Martin and I've had this, I saw that tweet, so Roland and I've had this um, ongoing battle over who can prepare and make the best gumbo. And we have a bunch of celebrity friends of Roland's who all chimed in. When we get back to our lives on a normal day-to-day -day basis, maybe I will have Roland Martin on to make his gumbo. And then I will challenge him with my gumbo. Anyway, end of show, Johnny's going to join us to talk about the hair realness that is happening in all of our lives right now. Do you color? Do you not? What do you do with your hair? He's got some tips. Um, and we're going to have a follow-up, as I said, to one of our great stories um, that we had on the show earlier this season. A couple who used one of their mothers as a surrogate to give birth to their child. That's a sweet story, right? Well, here's the best part. The mother, the woman who gave birth to the child was 61. So a 61-year-old grandmother gave birth to her own granddaughter and the baby turns one today. So we're gonna check in with them to see how they're doing. And my son is in the background and as I promised, uh, Moses will be, despite my husband's objections on the show today. So let's get started, our first guest, is Margaret. She is an ERICU nurse who is currently working at one of those drive-through testing sites. I'm sure you've seen them on cable news, on the local news. They're popping up everywhere. And I've been curious about the people who do that job. How do they take their safe? What do they do about their own safety? What is the protocol? How does that work? So we have with us, I'm going to buzz her in, Margaret, who is, ah, my camera just fell down. Okay, Margaret, 
who is an ER nurse and she is currently working in one of the drive-through testing sites in this area. So I'm gonna pull her up and I wanna know how do they test everyone from every age? I just learned today that it's by appointment. Does she, is she worried when she goes home? How long are the shifts? So there's so many questions to get her to answer and I'm pulling up her page right now to get her to join us live on the show. I see everybody else who's in here, my goodness. A lot of our fans want to be the Tam Fam fan of the day. We are still working out this technology, I cannot lie to you, but I am trying to find our first guest that we can dial in to join us. Um, you may have heard yesterday, we are working to try to get back on air day to day because guess who could not and cannot do this every day? Moi, that's who can't do this from home every day. I miss the team. I miss being on air live with y'all. Hold on. But I love this version of the show as well. So let me see if I can find her. Um, Nick and team, I just rebooted and I am looking for our guests. And if you have questions for any of the guests, feel free to chime in, I'm going to try my best to get questions in to all of you. Margaret, I am looking for your handle here and I do not see it, but I see everybody else trying to be the Tam Fam member of the day. By the way, if I click on your page and I pop you up on the show, the, the, the rule is you must be dressed. I don't care how your earrings look or what you have on, but please, have on some clothes. Let me try this one more time, guys. I'm trying to pull in Margaret. She, as I said, an ER ICU nurse, and Margaret is um, currently working in one of the drive-through lines. Uh, oh, there's my mother. She's here. Hi, Mom. How are you? Um, Okay, I see everyone. I see someone, full frontal beauty. Are you here for the hair tips? Okay, you know what I'm gonna do, guys? I'm going to just reconfigure our rundown today and we'll get to Margaret as soon as we figure this out. What? All of y'all are popping in to my show. <laughs> this is genius. Okay, wait a minute. What is wrong with this technology? Roland Martin has jokes. Roland Martin can go away. Hey, Tam fam. Okay, this is, my assistant is calling me. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, and I don't think I am. But I can no longer see y'all. Oh, there's my fruit basket. How does that always happen? This is embarrassing. I am clicking on your requests to me, trying to Get in here and I cannot do it. Hold on. Let me call. Johnny is on the line. I know that. Um, they're telling me things I already know. Okay, guys, I have no idea what is going on here. Hold on. Human error. Oh my God. Roland Martin, get out of my Instagram feed. That's a cow head in the back. Actually, that's a water buffalo. While I stall here, ladies and gentlemen. It's a water buffalo that I got in Aspen, Colorado. These are Moses' Ten Commandments. I shall read them to you. Here we go while I stall. His rule, first rule for Moses, watch mama's show. Second, kiss papa before he leaves. FaceTime granny every day. Dance to Motown with mama. And number five, always smile. I'll have the rest of the Ten Commandments for Moses after the commercial break. But let me try to get our guest in again. Johnny Wright! Hey! <laughs> I'm here. You're here. We were supposed to be talking to um, our guest. Who yeah, I was really looking ER forward doctor. to that. We are going to get it together. But meanwhile, I've not seen you in a long time. And I've not no. had my hair done. Like so many other people, everybody's got jokes online. <laughs> now I'll realize how much we need and appreciate and love our hairstyles. 
Yes, yes, All right. definitely. Number one question, should we try to color our hair at home? Oh, so, so y'all don't know, so Johnny Wright is my hairstylist. Johnny, I met Johnny when he was 18 years old in Chicago. Um, Johnny came up to me and asked me if he could do my hair, that he'd had a dream as a teenager since I was a local news anchor. And we've been thicker than thieves ever since. Yes, Johnny, Johnny has gone on to do Michelle Obama's hair for eight years at the White House, Kerry Washington, um, Tuchina Arnold, um, Queen Latifah, Queen Angela Latifa, Rye. Angela Rye, my girl yeah. Angela Rye. Everybody yeah. he's done. So, and he does my hair every day for the show. And um, so, I color my hair. I think I've colored my hair since I, oh, somebody said you look like 50 Cent. Don't say <laughs> nothing. Because he can come for us and get to get. Let me put my head up so you can see more of my face. Right, right. So you can see more. Johnny, I've colored my hair since I was probably 17 because I like really dark hair, as you know. Yeah. I don't know if my hair is gray underneath. Lies. I know <laughs> that my hair is gray underneath. Should we try to color our hair on our own? I don't suggest it, I'll be honest. Oh, because come on, Johnny. If it's, if it's dark, that's one thing. If your hair is black or dark brown, yes, go and pick you up a permanent color from your local drugstore and go ahead and hit those roots up. But if not, I would suggest that you get Root Touch Up. They sell that at all your local drugstores. We can't Root leave the house. Yeah, you, well, you don't, you ain't supposed to be leaving the house anyway. <laughs> if you just try to look cute for your boo, I think the Root Touch Up is just fine. So Don't in go your, restoring your color. If you are able to leave your home under the guidelines of your particular city and you find yourself in a drugstore, yes. go and get a semi, no, permanent. No. So if, if you're, if, I don't suggest the permanent. The thing that I suggest is semi or semi-permanent colors. These things rinse out over time okay. as you shampoo it, and that way it won't be such a hard thing for the your stylist to actually get your color back. Okay. There also is a thing called root touch up. Root touch up. They come in an array of colors: your red, some blondes, and browns and black. Wait, 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 wait! And stop, stop, stop! Tamar Braxton is on here right now. Yes, that's, I told her I was going on. <laughs> We're going for a walk later, so I told her I was going on. Tamar is on. Oh, hi, Tamar. I love you. <laughs> I love you so much. Okay, so so do the root touch up if we can. Do okay. the root touch up. It's not a chemical, but it'll cover yeah. up those grays until it's time to get a new color. What about if we want to grow out a relaxer? A lot of people now, you know, want to say, hey, this is the time for me to grow out my relaxer. This is a great question. This is a great opportunity to do such. So first of all, this is a great opportunity to really nourish and condition your hair, okay? If you're trying to grow out your relaxer, if you've been wanting to do that for a while now, this is the perfect opportunity to go ahead and get that started. But here's the thing. What will assist you in growing out your, your relaxer now and forever is steam treatments. Steam treatments are necessary. It's going to give you that intense hydration, and it's also going to help moisturize that line of demarcation between the relaxed hair and the natural hair. Because that's a lot of times where people start to shed mostly and they get, get disencouraged and they want to start yes. getting relaxer again, okay? Okay, so, so if you're going to grow it out, this is a good time to do that. Yes, what about people so, who dye their hair blonde? Like uh, my, my mother-in-law, she's probably going to kill me for this, but she said her colorist is like, I'm going to send you what I use, the safe home version that you can use. I don't suggest it. You know, this is, a, this is a time that I think we should really operate patience and using our silk scarves, our bondage, our hats, and uh, pull your hair back on the ponytail. I don't suggest doing chemical treatments on yourself, particularly if you haven't done it before at okay. all. Okay, everyone is asking, what's the steam treatment? And while you answer Great. that, hold on, I'll be right back. But answer that question, what's the steam treatment? So this is how you do a steam treatment. You can go to Amazon. They actually have hooded steamers where you can purchase to have at your house. And what the great thing about steam, steam treatments are, it's good for your skin and it's also good for your hair, okay? So you can go and go to Amazon and get that. But if you can't, if those are not available, you can get a nice hand towel. And these are normally the towels that you use when you're um, 
when you when they're using when they're in the salon, the, the, the small towel they're using in the salon. You will saturate that with water, put it in a microwave for about 30 seconds to a minute. And then when you take it out, make sure you use a, a tongue to take it out. Don't touch it with your hand because I don't want you to burn yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. We had a uh. rapid roll. <laughs> we, I Is this the slick down for my... <laughs> Moses could not get to his hair salon. Moses' hair is so cute. What mommy does, I'm kidding. What I do for myself is we do a rapid roll. I, and so... I wash my hair and then I put the gel on it. Okay, for y'all, please, I did not put any gel on my child's hair. So That's conditioner? No, it's nothing. It's just water. Well, he, he don't like it. it. Look at him. He said, don't cover my hair. <laughs> He's never had He's like, none of that. Like, I'm sorry, Mosey. I used you in that way. But yeah, so this is a chance for us to go natural. And <laughs> hi, Johnny. This hey, Mosey. <laughs> <laughs> this is the chance for us to all just kind of nourish our hair and take care of our hair. Absolutely. So the, the thing what I was saying with the steam treatment, you could put it in like a, a, a glass bowl, wet your towel, put it in the microwave for 30 minutes to a minute, take a tong so you don't have to touch it with your hands, let it air out a little bit, and then wrap that around your head. That's going to create the steam for your hair, but that has to be done with your favorite conditioner or your favorite mask on your hair. Okay. You can do that about three to four times, and your, your treatment right. is complete. It's going to give you that intense moisture that you need. It's going to really help okay. soften the, the, the hair okay. and keep it healthy. All right, Jay. Thank you so much. We appreciate you joining of us. Of course. We hope that Margaret is on the line. Have a good one, Jay. All right, guys. See you okay. guys. Bye. Stay safe out there. All right. Stay safe. Okay, Mosey. I can't. Angie, can I get your help, please, real quick? I'm going to remove Moses from here because we're going to go on to the next part of our show, and he will return. You see he's got a little scratch on his nose? That's because I did not get a chance to trim his nails, which we'll talk about how to do at home. Here you go. Thank you. At home manis and petties so that you don't end up scratching your face. But he'll be back in a second. Okay, so let's get to Margaret right now. I'm told that she is available. Um, going through the list here. Oh, wow. There we go. Margaret, are you there? It says we're waiting for her. Connecting. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for joining oh, us. Thank, oh, you. thank you for having me. I'm it's so, so nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you uh, as well. So just so I can re refresh our audience, Margaret is an ER ICU nurse. You teach nursing at a community college, but right now you are working at one of the locations, the drive-through locations, where people can get tested for coronavirus. You work Correct. For, how long have you done the drive-through now? So with the drive-through up here uh, started last week. So we went for one day of training, and then um, we were on the front line the next day. So we work uh, like three days, and then uh, now it's mo Monday was the, uh, another week starting. So I'm working uh, when uh, Thursday, Friday, uh, Thursday, yeah, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. You went this through week. only one day of training. Is that enough? We did. Yeah, I feel like it's enough because we're all registered nurses. And to be honest with you, the test uh, is a simple test that we've all done before because it's very similar to a flu vaccine test or flu test. And so, you test with, so it's similar to, and we'll get to the test itself, but I'm right. just curious about, take me through your first day. I know that you ended up working how many hours? So the first day I worked 13 and a half, almost 14 hours, right? They're 12 hour shifts. 12 hour shifts. How does the day start? How did that first day start? So the day started where the day was a little because it was the first day, right, of testing. So the day was, um, was one of the beginning stages. So we, um, we all got together. We met. We talked briefly about again, what we had learned in the training session. And then um, we split into groups, and, th and those groups were two to three nurses, sometimes five nurses. Do you have some special volunteers. gear? Do they give you special we, gear? Correct. We have an N95 mask, and we have a, a face shield, double gloves, and then a whole um, gown that we use. And you then are assigned to what group you will work in. What group were you assigned? 
Well, you know, it wasn't a specific groups. It was just that there was like uh, two nurses, two nurses, four nurses. So some of them were staying in the bays, in the bays on the grounds because it's it is a drive through uh, testing site. But then when people are very sick, we do have a, a a group that goes out to the homes and test in the homes. Okay, so your group is on site, and as Correct. I understand it, people have to make an appointment to yes. test it at the drive through which I didn't know. I thought it was like a drive through You drive right. through feeling a certain way and you can be seen. Right, right. So, no, people actually have to make an appointment, um, and then they get an appointment time, and then they go at that time. That's not to say that these lines don't get very large. Yes. Having said that, they definitely are scheduled a certain time to come. If and they not, usually... Sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, no. That's okay. They usually come when they're when they're symptomatic. So we don't really have people that are coming that are not symptomatic or or feel like they are symptomatic. And symptomatic is defined as a fever, cough, fatigue. Correct. So it's mostly a fever, a dry cough. Uh, some people say they have a sore throat. Um, and then some people complain of a headache. That is the headache sometimes, not always, but definitely the fever and the and the sore throat and the dry cough. So once they get to you after they've made the appointment, they have certain symptoms. You then do what? So we go. Uh, so the, it's like a bay. It's almost like a car wash, like those white tented car washes, right? If you've ever had that. So you pull up with your ID. You leave the windows closed. You have um, your ID in the window, and then someone checks your ID through that window to make sure you're who you say you are and that we have an appointment for you. And then you go further on to the test where I am and another nurse is, and, um, and we explain through the window, we gain consent. So we say, you're here to, um, for the corona test. You're here for the... Um, you know, you know that it's a nasal swab, it's a nasal pharynx swab, and they, they say yes, and we gain consent through the window. We, we verify their information through the window still. And then for the brief period that we do the test, we have them roll down their window. What's the brief period of the test? It's maybe 20 to 30 seconds long. And I've heard 20 to 30. people talk about it. Is, is it a swab test? Yes, yes. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's about um, a seven inch long, uh, like almost wire with a little brush at the end of it. And that swab goes into one of your nostrils. It's a nasal pharynx swab. So it goes into one of your nostrils and um, for about, and it goes all the way back pretty deep through, you know, almost to the back, like where you touch the ear almost, about three inches from your ear. And then we take a little sample and then put it um, in a container. So it does go deep. I've heard people say it's uncomfortable, but I, as a woman who is 49, would say, if you've ever had a pap smear or a mammogram, I'm sure exactly. you can handle this. <laughs> exactly. You're 100% right. It is what nursing terms we use as uncomfortable, right? Us nurses love to say the term uncomfortable. It, is, it should not elicit pain. It is not a painful test. It is not what you're used to. So it is uncomfortable, but it is not painful. So is it a two? Someone just asked, is it two swabs or one? One swab. So one swab. there's one swab. It's nasopharynx. It's not oral. It's nasopharynx swab. So it goes through your nostril, one nostril, one swab. Okay. And usually right now at the, at the location where you are working, how soon are you getting results back? So that's a great question. It's three, it's a three day, um, it's three days before you get the, the results back. So we tell you after you roll up the window and another nurse, you know, is, is, um, is doing the information about the swab. We tell you, please stay home for three days, okay. self isolate for three days, act like you are positive until you hear from us. How so we do tell you that. Personally, uh, how worried are you? I mean, you weren't coming in contact, I believe. Um, you personally tested around 60 people. Right, right. How concerned are you about your own health? We know that in Italy alone, there have been reports of, I believe, over 200 healthcare workers who've lost the battle to coronavirus. You're on the front right. lines. You are protecting right. us. Right. You know, I feel like we're safe. I feel like I'm personally safe because I feel like we do have a lot of, uh, we have the N95 masks, we have the gloves, double gloves, we have the, but I will say, of course, I'm a mom as well. I have a little boy. So of course, you feel like, um, 
I don't want to put my family in jeopardy, uh, you know, let, uh, let alone myself. I would never do that. So we're all, we're all quite concerned. I mean, it's a, it's a time of uncertainty, do you know? But we take the, the measures that we can to, to provide our own safety. Are you so, tested before you go in? Do, do you check your fever? Do you check your fever after the shift? Right, right. Happen? So I, I do, I tend to check my fever, just, you know, my temperature, just because I want to make sure, but that isn't a requirement and we're not tested before the site, before we be, go into the site. Should that be the next level of this to make sure that healthcare workers are protected and, and have not contracted the virus and are asymptomatic? Right, you know, um, that's a great question, and I don't know that I have a clear answer for that. You know, because I feel like, um, yes, it might be a good idea having said that. You know, there's also a level of panic that, you know, you don't, because we are also in flu season, and you can have a fever from an, a simple allergy. Yeah. So you don't really want to take the ball and run with that. You know what I mean? You want to... How often do you change your gloves and your mask? Because they're in short supply. Right. So we change our gloves every patient, every patient, so we don't contaminate the next patient. And our, and our mask, because uh, we have a shield over the N95 mask as well, um, they're changed when, when, after our shift is done. So if we're in there for two hours after the shift is done. Having said that, if you feel at all like you've been contaminated or there is some kind of problem with your mask, by all means, they tell you change your mask. So I feel safe on that level. Tell me about the people that you are encountering. All age groups, do you take children? Have you seen children? Right. What, what's the background here? So we all age groups, all demographics, all ages of people. So we see children up until elderly pet patients and everyone in between. So, you know, there is, let's face it, a huge amount of fear, right? In this, so we're seeing a lot of people. And, you know, putting faces on people, I mean, it's, you know, people are very worried. They're afraid. They're, we're at a time where there's a lot of anxiety, you know? So, and we want to alleviate some of that, but we want, we want people to test. We're happy when they test. Overall, do you feel the situation is, as far as the, the protocol and the flow is getting better? Or do you feel that we're still in a gridlock? The lines are too long. What, what are your thoughts on the process and if it's getting more efficient? I feel like, well, you have to understand people that we're doing it days and days now. So it is getting more efficient. I mean, it's like a well-oiled machine. You know, we're getting the test done. We're getting the results back. I mean, and you will see a rise in, in the test results because we're testing so many more people. So you're going to see those numbers increase. Um, we are seeing, we're seeing numbers of people come, and that's terrific. We want to make sure that people are testing. We want to make sure people are safe. All right. Well, uh, the last question before I let you go. <clears throat> Do you believe that this could be a part of the future of how we test for flu season? Um, is this a game changer? Because I don't recall ever seeing anything like this where we've set right. up drive through centers like this. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Um, I think it could be. And I think that the good part about it, if you look at the great parts about anything, because you do want to make sure that you know that, like, this is just a period in time. This, you know, people are having moments, they're upset, and they're anxious, and we try to alleviate some of that, saying, listen, it's better to get tested. It, will it be the wave of the future? It could be because, you know, A, it's outside, so that's great, because you're not enclosed in a doctor's office where other people have the flu or have corona. So that's terrific. And we're getting those tests done quickly. So you don't have a long lag period, you know? You don't have a period where you're waiting on, you know, in, the, in an office for six hours or whatever. And my, my one more question came to my mind. You, yeah. or is there a worry of running out of swabs at the site? Yeah, no, you know what? We've had what we needed. I'm not speaking for everywhere, but we've definitely had what we've needed to test and to be, you know. And also, you know, people come up and they'll tell you their story and, and they're nervous and they're anxious. So, you know, we want to make sure that you get tested and that you're safe. Well, thank you for being comforting to those who are worried and afraid. Thank you for your expertise in providing those essential swab tests. I know you're in New York, Stony Point area. Give our best to all of your colleagues. And thank you so much for making time, Margaret. My thoughts, my prayers. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Terrific. Thanks a lot. Bye. She was awesome. That was great information. I know some of you heard 
um, Moses in the background right now because he is in a mood today. I think he has quarantine fever. So um, since we're in the family mood, I want to get quickly to our next guest, our TAM fam members of the day. Now, I happen to know who this is, so it's not a surprise. What is Excuse me one second. I'm having a child care emergency. Hang on, please. What's wrong with you? Oh my God! Come here, come here. You're gonna go upstairs. You cannot keep doing this every day. This is not how it works. Mommy has to work. I realize that you think that this is your show, but we can't behave this way. I'm sorry. Sorry, we're back. Uh, okay, I, I don't know. What, you're having a bad day today? You're sleepy. Okay, here. Here's the oh, controversial yeah. thing I'm about to do. I'm about to give my child a pinky. And somebody's probably going to say something about it. But this is what happens. Oh, let me fix your hair back. Maybe you're mad at mommy. Okay. So our next guest on our show, he's Roland says you're tired of computer glitches. <clears throat> he can hear what mommy's thinking about him. Um, so our next guest, we're going to go back. Because I said our reruns are doing so well the ratings for the reruns it's crazy how you all have been watching and one of the episodes that we love so much was an amazing couple Elliot and Matthew um, they are new parents in an extraordinary way one of their moms was the surrogate for the child but not just any mom she was 61 years old at the time she gave birth to their beautiful baby, Uma, and they're joining us now, and watch Uma's not gonna act like this with her parents, from Nebraska. Let's see if we've got, ah! Let's check in, because today is Uma's birthday. We're waiting on Elliot and Matthew so that we can say hi. Okay. Hi, guys! Hi! Hi, Uma! Happy birthday! <laughs> Happy birthday! How are you guys? You're in Nebraska. What's the state of the state there? Are you in, uh, are they allowing you to travel out to the grocery store? What's the situation? Uh, well, we are self-quarantined. We're allowed to do essential things like go to the grocery store, but we are on lockdown right now. That is amazing. Well, listen, the best place to be is with family. Even when that family is not after right on your TV right? show. <laughs> we feel that. We feel that. I know. So tell me how things are going. You shared your story. You were on our show back in September. Um, you talked about your mom, Cecile, Matthew's mom, Cecile, who was 61 at the time she carried Uma. Can you believe it? Does it feel like a year? Uh, it just, it's such a surreal moment because we re remember it so vividly, but at the same time, it feels like a lifetime ago. Um, but yeah, no, it's just crazy because at that time, you know, her birth created all sorts of, all sort of attention and a media whirlwind yeah. and had all these people involved. And now a year later, we're isolated in our homes in a quarantine with just the three of us. And it's this kind of weird still moment for us to kind of reflect on the wild year we've had. <laughs> Sorry, my son thinks I'm funny. But I mean, yeah. <laughs> so we're, Moses is celebrating his first birthday in April. Did you have plans? for Uma's birthday that yeah, got changed we, because of this? Yeah, we definitely were uh, intending to do a pretty big bash for her birthday, but honestly, we've really adjusted to this new idea and we're really having an awesome day together and it's really nice. You did our show, as I said, and Cecile, blew, Matthew, you're on, blew us away <laughs> being the perfect candidate at 61 years old. How is she doing? And, and what's been the, the feedback on all of this? Well, she's bounced back really quickly, both with her, you know, physical, emotional health. I mean, she's a, a rock star. She is. I that. think it's probably killing her that she can't be here to celebrate her granddaughter's first birthday. So we jokingly said we wanted her in the background, in the window, kind of stalking the situation. So you've not been able to see her at all during this time? We just made the decision ourselves to kind of stay quarantined in our own homes. And even though she's so healthy and so fit, but she's still 61 years, 62 years old at this point. So, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so that's amazing. Well, you know what? 
Uma is a blessing, as you well know. I am so happy. The reception and the feedback we got after you guys appeared on the show was fantastic. So I'm hoping next year we can have a party together. Yeah, yeah, yes, and, yes, and awesome. based on the behavior of Uma, if you want to switch babies, I'm available. It's all about food. It's all, it's all, about, is food. That what I, it's all about going upstairs and taking a nap. But we <laughs> that's we that's good, that's good. adore you guys. Congratulations. I heard that your story may be turned into a movie. Yeah, so our life rights have been secured by Stephen and Kathleen Gyllenhaal. And so they're in the process of, of, of creating that. And so I was talking to one of your producers and my ultimate goal and dream is for my mom to be played by Molly Shannon. I think that's oh, the perfect kid. I love it. I love right? it. You're in good hands with the Gyllenhaals. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Happy birthday. Happy. Okay, seriously. You, well, and, and maybe one day we'll be celebrating a wedding with these two. Oh, ooh, la, la. oh man, she disagrees. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> oh, she disagrees. Well, happy birthday, Uma. Yay. Happy birthday, Uma. Yeah. Happy birthday, dear Uma. Happy birthday to you. Yay. 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 Joining us. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. They're so sweet. How great of a guest were they? Moses, okay, listen, the babies are so cute. Um, yes, Moses is super sleepy, but I cannot tell that right now. We've had a great show for you. I'm looking through my notes. Um, are you, do you have anything left to say? Some people are criticizing your binky. They think you need to spit the passy out. I think they need to mind their business, but that's what I think. But anyway, <laughs> we love you. We appreciate you. Moses is blushing because he's asleep. Uh, I'm looking for my notes for tomorrow's show. Uh, we are going to talk to a Broadway star from Dear Evan Hansen about how Broadway has been affected. Dear Evan Hansen is one of our favorite Broadway shows. They performed live for us on the TH show. So we're going to be joined by Gabrielle Caruba to talk about Broadway, how she's making it through and how we can support the Broadway community when we come back. You know what? Okay. That's our show for today. Thank you for joining us. Passies are fine. Thank you so much. But see, Miss Horizon said, oh, guess what I heard? Nanny Connie was on here. If y'all don't know about Nanny Connie, Nanny Connie is the most amazing parent expert on the horizon. I give her book to everyone. She's on here. If you have a baby and you're looking for a foolproof sleep tip trick, go to Nanny Connie's website, get her book. Maybe we'll have her join us next week. We love Nanny Connie. All right, guys, have a great day. Say bye, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We will see you tomorrow at 1.30, and I'm going to have my nap, and I'm going to have my binky out of my mouth. Give, give me this thing. Give me this thing. Give, give, oh, 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 okay, never mind. Bye, y'all. It's real. It's real.